Hi there, I'm Jethro and this is Semicolon Talk. Today I have the pleasure of speaking with the youngest certified AWS Developer Associate in Africa. He is an alumni of Semicolon and he is a wonder kid of tech. So Joshua, introduce yourself to us. Okay, my name is Joshua Bola. I am a programmer, future skills activist. I'm also a YouTuber in the name of Joshua Tech. Please subscribe. And I'm also an advocate for teaching of tech skills to young kids okay. at an early age. So, Joshua, how did you feel to be the youngest certified AWS developer associate in Africa? Okay, because how... of the fact that um, <laughs> people like Vital B, Nicolas Saraki were actually sharing their accolades on you. It was very exciting. Uh, first foremost, I, I am really good for those uh, media features because it really shows that the hard work paid off and all the hours of studying. It was about it took me about two months plus everything to prepare for the exam and it was a huge process it was a huge process and it was two exams i prepared for which was the solutions academic and the develop developer associates which were two big exams on their own which i had to prepare for there were a lot of services a lot of development services security and uh, and of course deployment which took a lot of time to learn, especially development, because there are a lot of services in the de de development. Because companies know how can they use AWS services to their own advantage, especially in their products. So how can you implement this as your database product? Um, what about you know running code um, as functions? How can I streamline my process? What are the if I have a voice assistant, if I have a chatbot, how do I create a chatbot? A lot of things that you have to do. How can I tr transcribe? You know, also, poly turning speech to text, text to speech. So many services that you had to learn for development. Apart from that, there also security, which was how you keep customer data safe, compliance. You have to know about compliance and, aud and auditing. There's a lot of things not just knowing AWS and what it does, knowing things that actually need to be known in cloud and you know in the cloud development space so compliance and auditing you know how can you get um uh, you know compliance files you know how can you find sensitive data um, using amazon marquee there's so many services that you have to learn okay. but the fact that i was able to do that i'm able to get all these accolades which i'm very grateful for was really really ambitious and really important for me and i really thank um, peter will for picking me up because that's the first time i've ever been shouted out by a really big news figure like okay. um, peter will which was very amazing that's interesting so you know at semicolon we call our, our alumni ancestors so yeah. even, even when you're a teenager we still call you an ancestor <laughs> so uh how did semicolon help you in this tech journey god semicolon help me in this tech journey okay first and foremost there are a lot of support from the um the tutors especially um in the names of Nonso, Mr. Nonso, uh, and Mr. Olainka. When I was trying to learn AI, I was researching how does this AI say, well, how can I develop something in AI? Because I was really, people were talking about AI at that time, and they're still talking about it today, if you charge GPT coming up, but it was what really helped me in my learning. It, it helped me when I was learning ML, you try to, because I was very curious about it, just learning everything. What, what can I learn in this ML? How can I create something that can help someone in machine learning? And it was a very huge, um, opportunity to be to have mentors at my side um of course apart from the mentors also the chief at the top was always checking me or check up on me joshua it, it, when i'm when i when i let's say i was done with the session of class asked me what did you learn um i how are you progressing this if i come back from the weekend how is your java <laughs> <That's> java <laughs> how's your java how's your spring boots what are you what is the new thing you're learning have you discovered what you really where you want to go always check up on me i mentioned sure that i'm not slacking and i'm always keeping focus which is a huge opportunity to be able to be pushed by someone who kept me progressing and also for this certificate i was able to know what do I want to do? Because there was a huge overview I went through. There was like a lot of things that semicolon taught. And I realized that the areas I wanted to go to, which was which were web development, and then I now then I discovered cloud, which really helped me. And also the critical thinking and design thinking. So the, the two most important classes and they happened at the beginning. And also the business training, which was very critical. Because it really drive my drive um, drove my interest for, you know, business and creating my own this creating my own tech product. And design thinking really helped me think in a in a different way, think about problems. In the, in the eye of solving them, instead of the eye of running away from them. So I would say um, that's how it really helps me. So Joshua, how would you describe the semiconductor program generally? 
how would I describe it? I said it was a very exciting program, especially to me. Okay. Uh, I loved the program. It was very exciting. I didn't want to, when we were graduating, I didn't want to leave because it was a very exciting program. It really sparked my interest in programming a bit more because I had to learn a lot of things. Okay. I was able to overview, even refresh the knowledge I already knew, and now to also learn okay, what, what other um, areas or sectors that were in technology that I could reach into, which helped me to have that. So not just for me, someone that is just a programmer, okay. someone that wants to look at, let's say, creating their own business, they have to know, okay, these are the sections that you have to know that people, when people are developing their full product, okay. that there's this section and this section. I, I, of course, I love the design thinking, I could have taken classes, which really stuck with me. I find the tutor of mm -hmm. those classes, the way he talked about product, you bring out, Diagrams, you draw it on the board. To just make sure we understand you know, this thinking cycle, which was money mainly for products. Okay. I think that really helped people that were looking to go into product design. Mm. And I loved it. Also, the critical thinking. Yeah. When we're giving, we're giving, you know, we're giving scenarios. You know, what we do in this situation, and you know, how do we look at life through this through, through this perspective that he gave us, which okay. is a good way to look at problems and life as solutions and how to solve problems. So I'll say that is. But it's my general experience, and also the community, of course. Yeah. Lovely community. The community is beautiful. Beautiful community. So, how do you combine being a techpreneur, being a YouTuber, you know, judge for tech, going for competitions, uh, and going to school? It's true. It's it. I get asked that question a lot, and it's true that I have to get get the balance because it's. At first, when I was starting out, it wasn't that easy okay. because I didn't know how to really structure my program. How do I, how do I learn programming? How do I go to school? How do I make sure I'm getting the most of each of each um each areas? Okay. But what I'm not excited to do is right now I'm able to find the balance, which okay. is better for me right now, mm. which is maximizing my progress. I'm able to find time in my scheduled program mm. to work on my technology skills and to not leave education hanging and spend a lot of time in both areas but while keeping each one so also a lot of time to play because yes. <laughs> of course i'm a kid i play a lot of games <laughs> you know, i play games and of course I'm my brother we we play a lot okay. we, even though he's younger than me but we play a lot so it's always have to find a balance especially in things in life which is very important to my program yeah. I, which i love that my parents have helped me build this um you know program where i can balance everything together which is very amazing so kudos to my parents kudos to your parents and then my mom okay what are your futuristic plans i know i asked this question backstage okay what are my futuristic plans hmm. first and foremost uh i would at the the biggest point which is my biggest dream i would love to maybe own a tech product one day okay a big one that could be as maybe as big as facebook <laughs> you know dream big win big so as big as facebook and the people could really use and could make use of and i like, could be known like as a worldwide need that ah this guy created this program and it has helped me do stuff so that's my biggest dream okay. but if i'm looking for a place to work at i will look at um any mang or fang that's mm. why facebook is meta you okay. have to keep up with the trends you know as they say so Meta and um, Amazon, but at first Google. Google has always been my major okay. contributor. Um, it's been my major. If I'm looking for a company to work at, of course, to be Google, because mm. I just love the way they have, they have built their, they should have structured their company okay. and the amount of products they have. They're amazing and they solve a lot of problems for me. Probably Google Workspace. Okay. We're talking about that Google Workspace, which allows you to keep everything in a one-stop shop. Okay. So from Gmail, you can access your Google Docs. I find that everything is connected with just with your Gmail account mm. and you can access everything for free. No, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a bargain. That's yeah. a bargain. So, what is your advice to other young people um, just like you? I remember in one of your videos you mentioned something about UAR right. and all of that. So, what is your advice to young people who want to achieve, who want to get to where you are right now? Okay, so now, now the the abbreviation UAR is unnecessary adult restrictions. Okay. So the reason why I use that word is because it really annoyed me at that time because I'll try to sign up for something. I want to learn something. I want to experience um you know, let's say I wanted to go for a tutorial, even just um time when I was learning game development. Okay. So I tried to learn game development, you know, very curious, trying to learn everything I could I could get from the tech space. I tried to learn game development okay. and there were a lot of restrictions. I also saw that um some I couldn't access some like bef right for my cloud, okay. even for my cloud, there was a program I wanted to go for that was supposed to like give me um, hands-on, more hands-on knowledge. 
I wasn't able to go through it because I wasn't 16, 17 and older and which was very annoying for me even though right now that I've passed the 13 year old mark okay it's easier for me but okay. back then ah man, it was harder it was harder and then i'm even older it has made it easier but that time ah it was uh, but i really don't find um, restrictions on educational content really helpful okay there are a lot of kids right there that are very they're, they're very curious about True. what's going on here even though it might not be okay like the like us like what they know what the my kids do mm. but some kids are really they really love technology and they, they want to check out what's going on in this technology space what can i build what can i develop and they're very excited about it so restricting it to people 18 plus and 16 plus does not seem fair okay. i know restrictions are placed for good reasons to protect children sure. but when it comes to learning i don't think learning can damage a kid mentally so I would say that restrictions on educational content that can help and spark curiosity should be banned. I would, I would still support that. So that's why I said you are. That's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. It was nice meeting you, Joshua. And Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice having this interview too. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I am very set that you definitely make us all proud. You're already doing that in Africa, and we're certain that you are going to. Skyrocket. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I will.